right, so this is going to be their movie review. This one's called 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, 1944, giving it one out of five stars. I hated this flick as expected. I think I gave so many war propaganda films such a low rating that Adrian no longer interested in genre. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I'm doing this movie review anyways. Overall, in the disc, one out of five stars. <clears throat> the movie is way too long, two hours and 18 minutes. It is boring. There are some explosions over Tokyo, but the 30 seconds kinds of kind of gives away how many explosions there are there are only a handful and they last 30 seconds <laughs> anyway 30 seconds over Tokyo is a 1944 US war film produced by MGM I thought it was Warner Brothers I was wrong in one of my previous videos the screenplay by Dalton Trumbo is based on the 1943 book of the same name by Captain Ted W Lawson Lawson was pilot on the historic Doolittle Raid, America's first retaliatory airstrike against Japan, four months after the December 7, 1941 Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The raid was planned, led by and named after U.S. Army Air Force's Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle, who was promoted two ranks to Brigadier General the day after the raid. <coughs> Guy loses his leg, the other guy gets promoted. <clears throat> Sam Zimbalist was the film's producer, and Mervyn Leroy directed the, the picture stars Van Johnson. He's been in so many war movies. I can't even remember. As Lawson. Remember, he, he cooked an egg in his helmet or something? Phyllis Thaxter as his beaming wife, Ellen. She's always smiling. Robert Walker as Corporate David Thatcher, Robert Mitchum as Lieutenant Bob Gray, and Spencer Tracy as Lieutenant Colonel and soon General Jimmy Doolittle. Tracy's appearance in the film is more in the nature of a guest star. He receives special billing rather than his usually top billing, and he has uh, considerably less screen time than Star Van Johnson. In the book, Lawson gives an eyewitness account of the intensive training and the aftermath as experienced by his crew and by the others who flew the mission on April 18, 1942. Lawson piloted, piloted, piloted the ruptured duck, the seventh of 16 B-25s to take off from the aircraft carrier USS Hornet. I've, I've been to that USS Hornet. It's a museum in Al Alameda. The film depicted the raid accurately, and it used actual wartime footage of the bombers. Oh, okay. So you get a lot of technical stuff in, in this one. Not long after the Pearl Harbor attack, U.S. Army Air Force's Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle orders 24 North American B-25 Mitchell medium bombers with volunteer Cruise to report to Eglin Field, Florida, for a secret three-month-long mission. I've got to get my uh, lasagna out of the oven. <laughs> I'll be right back.
sorry. I spilled some sauce on the side of the oven. I had to clean that up. All right. They arrive on March 1st. Among them is the craft piloted by Ted Lawson. This crew consists of Lieutenant Dean Davenport, co-pilot, Lieutenant Charles McClure, navigator, Lieutenant Bob Cleaver, bombardier, and Corporal David Thatcher, gunner me mechanic. Doolittle warms them. This work is top secret. He offers them the chance to opt out, particularly if they have wives and families. Austin's wife, Ellen, drives to Eglin Field to join him. She is pregos. They are very much in love, but ne giving up never occurs to them. Uh, I think at one point, Robert Mitchum says, we either bomb them or they bomb us. <laughs> and Spencer Tracy has this lame thing where he says, if you think dropping bombs on civilians is murder, you can leave. No hard feelings. And, of course, none of them leave because they all want to murder civilians. <laughs> the intensive training, training includes learning how to take off on a runway only 500 feet long as taught by an instructor named naval aviator from nearby Pensacola Naval Air, Air Station. They are not told why, and those who guess keep quiet. Lawson's plane acquires the nickname Ruptured Duck and knows art to match. One dark morning, Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle sends them off to fly Christ cross country at hedge hopping height to Naval Air Station, Alameda, California. I deliver groceries there all the time. There's a museum with the USS Hornet. I've been on that ship. The planes are immediately loaded aboard the aircraft carrier USS Hornet. At last, Doolittle reveals the mission. Bomb Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka, Kobe, and Nagoya. The carrier will get them within 400 miles of mainland Japan. After dropping their payloads, they will continue to designated land landing spots in parts of China, controlled by nationalist forces, and regroup in Chongqing. I guess they're talking about uh, Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, or present day Taiwan. The next day, they learn about takeoff procedures. If a plane malfunctions, it will be pushed over the side. Lieutenant Jerica works with each crew on its own bombing run. At the penultimate briefing, Doolittle warns that any man who cannot cope with the unavoidable killing of civilians should drop out without shame. <laughs> I think uh, well uh, this movie is irritating alright so the call to battle stations comes twice daily at dawn and dusk when the enemy pig boats submarines come up when it Enemy surface vessel does discover the convoy. The crews assembled take off immediately 12 hours earlier than planned. It will be daylight over Japan and night when they reach China. Doolittle leads the raid, dropping incendiary bombs to mark key targets. The ruptured duck is a seven flight, flying low over the ocean and into Tokyo through the smoke, burning targets, dropping their bombs as planned. Flak bursts around them, but fighters ignore them. <clears throat> Lawson crashes in the surf while trying to land on the beach in darkness and heavy rain. Everyone but Thatcher is badly injured. Lawson's left leg is laid open to the bone, <clears throat> off camera, of course, and McClure's shoulders are broken. Friendly Chinese help him, and the Americans, the, U the uh, U.S. soldiers, face hardships, danger, while being escorted through Japanese-held territory. In the absence of any medical supplies, the injured men endure terrible pain, and Lawson's leg becomes infected. He dreams of Ellen. 
He keeps having flashbacks. There is a Red Cross banner in the village of Xingming. Dr. Chung arrives with good news and bad. He will take them to his father's hospital some 19 miles far, farther. The bad news is that the Japanese have captured a U.S. crew hurrying into the hills. They look back. Xingming is burning. There is no surgeon at the elder Dr. Chung's hospital, but Lieutenant Smith's crew is on its way with Lieutenant Doc White, who volunteered as a gunner. Japanese approach and the able-bodied Americans leave except for Doc. He takes Lawson's leg off well, well above the knee using the single dose of spinal anesthesia in their possession. It wears off too soon. Lawson passes out and he dreams of Ellen again. I think that's the third time. Cut to a chorus of Girl Scouts singing the Star Spangled Banner in Mandarin. Celebrating Lawson's first day out of bed, his forehead shows a tracery of scars. When Dr. Chung Sr. gives Lawson an heirloom bracelet for his wife, Lawson is puzzled. He does not remember talking about her. <clears throat> when he totters on crutches, he becomes distraught at the idea of Ellen seeing him like this. They hurry to Chang Chow to rendezvous with an American uh, U.S. plane that takes them home. General Doolittle calls Ellen, sobbing with joy. She tells her mother why Ted refuses to see her, as if it would matter. Doolittle visits Lawson in the hospital, and he tells him that he has work for him to do. And that's pretty much the movie. I don't want to spoil the ending. Uh... The film is known for its actor, accurate depiction of the raid and uh, use of actual wartime footage of bombing aircraft. I think I mentioned it. The production crew worked closely with Captain Ted Lawson and other members of the raid to make the film as realistic as possible. Filmed at Herbert Field and Peel Field near Mary Esther, Florida and Eglin Field, which is the actual base where the Doolittle Raiders trained <clears throat> an operational USAAF B-25C and B-25D bombers were used, closely resembling the B-25B Mitchells used in 1942. Uh... According to MGM Records, the film made $4.297 million in the U.S. and Canada and $1.95 million elsewhere, resulting in a profit of $1.382 million. 1945 Academy Awards, uh, Oscar for Best Special Effects won. They won the Oscar for uh, special effects, and they were nominated in the category of black and white cinematography. AFI's 100 Years 100 Movies nominated AFI's 100 Years 100 Heroes and Villains. Lieutenant Colonel James H. Doolittle nominated Hero. AFI's 100 Years 100 Cheers nominated. All right. Um, I couldn't stand this movie. <laughs> it was about what I expected, though. Let me show you the other movies. I'm about ready to watch The Choppers. I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully I can get this review in today. Uh, we went to Latin Mass, but his mother kept bugging me to take him to the beach with his buddy Robert. When I found out that Robert's evil sister is going to be there, I refused. A third time, she didn't listen to me the first two times. I actually uh, yelled and cursed at her in front of my son, which I'm not supposed to do, but I did it anyway. <laughs> That's the only way to get her to listen. 
And then we, uh, but, well, we did go to Latin Mass, the uh, the conservative priest guy. I thought he was a CDC libertarian, but he worships the military now. He's talking about the Blue Angels. You can hear him. The Blue Angel planes flying up <laughs> overhead. And uh, he wanted to bless the military. Here's the bells of St. Mary's. That's the other disc I got from Netflix. <clears throat> I don't know what. This is two hours, six minutes. I'm definitely not getting to that one. <laughs> I have to save it for next week. I've been kind of slow getting through these Netflix DVDs. But uh, anyways, so the, we'll listen to the... Uh, English sermon after he does all his Latin rigmarole. <laughs> He's got like 11 choir boys, uh, I mean, 11 altar boys there. Some of them look uh, kind of older. And so it was, it was a pretty decent uh, ceremony, actually. But uh, then he, speaking of the military, then he, uh, he, he said, God bless the, uh, the people in uniform or something. <laughs> well, I thought this was going to be like a, uh, a Veterans Day mass or something. But then he, uh, he completely changed the subject and he started talking, <laughs> he started talking, going off or uh, uh, railing on, uh, on uh, left-wing synagogues and uh, churches around the area. <laughs> and he, he, he railed against abortion, homosexuality, left-wing churches and synagogues. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, Grusom, Mussolini, and uh, what else? Uh, climate change alarmism. He went off on that. So he has a way of uh, starting out his sermons really bad and then ending his sermons really good. Anyways, so we went to that. I'm not taking my son to the beach later. Thank God. I weaseled my way out of that one. Don't ask me how. But uh, it was difficult. It's diff It's always difficult dealing with my ex-wife, his mother. But uh, anyways, um, I guess I'll watch the choppers next. Sorry to have taken so long to uh, to get my uh, review in. I think the last reviews I did were all bonus features, later's.